Freddie Coleman. You hear him late nights here on 104.5 The Team, ESPN Radio, Freddie and Fitz. Uh, Freddie, you know what? This is becoming like kind of a revolving door here. Every time Freddie's on, he's not exactly sure who he will be speaking with. <laughs> Roger is on the road again, man, but it is Chris Honorado, and I've got Tom Goslowski with me from Levac and Goz here in the afternoon as well. Freddie, uh, good morning, man. How are we feeling? Ready for week I'm four, feeling right? pretty good, gentlemen. How's everybody doing today in the Capital District? All good, all good. We're good, we're good. We're going to we're gonna get to some football, and then I want to ask you some other stuff away from the field, of course. Uh, but last night's game, Green Bay uh, and Chicago, Danny Trevathan's hit, dirty or not, and it, was it a suspendable offense? It wasn't dirty, but he should have been tossed out of the game last night because he was trying to make a play at that standpoint. He just lowered his head, and you have to make sure your head is up and see the target. He didn't launch, but you still leveled your helmet. I thought not only should he have been penalized, and they did penalize Chicago for that, but he should have been tossed out of the game. I don't think it's a suspendable hit because it wasn't as if he was trying to make it. You could tell when someone's being dirty or someone is launching with their helmet. That's why I don't think he should be suspended, but he should not have played the rest of that game. I thought the referees missed the boat on that one by just only throwing the penalty and not kicking him out of the game. I thought that should have happened. All right, as the Giants look to avoid an 0-4 start, I haven't buried them quite yet at 0-3, just with the little bit of a flash we saw in the fourth quarter at Philadelphia. Uh, but they are going to need, obviously, more big games from Odell Beckham Jr. to try to carry them uh, out of this 0-3 start. Are the Giants done? And do they have any chance at winning at Tampa Bay, which, of course, is uh, is Gaza's team? <laughs> Well, they have a chance of winning at Tampa Bay, but I think the Giants are done in terms of getting into the playoffs because the division that they play in right now, they're 0-3, everybody else is 2-1. and Number two, that's a lot to push that boulder back to the top of the hill and hope things break right for you to even think about getting into the playoffs. But I think this is the most important factor with this football team. Eli Manning was terrific last week, especially they were able to get the ball out of his hands quickly. This way he was not a sitting duck back there to getting sacked but they still don't have that running game not, to not only help him, but also to help that defense. And if you don't have that, you become a one-punch team. And at a certain point when you're one-dimensional, teams are going to figure that out. And then when you make that mistake, it's going to be even harder for your offense and harder for your defense. Now, they lose to Tampa Bay on Sunday. They're completely done. There's no doubt about that. But I don't even think they're going to make the playoffs because it's hard to start 0-3 and think in that division that you're going to be able to be in contention to get into the wild card. I just don't see that with this football team this year. The New York Jets play the Jacksonville Jaguars, and they're coming off of a victory against the Miami Dolphins. Are we about to see the New York Jets go to 500 on the season? In the NFL, and I've learned this, <laughs> and I hate the fact that I know this, I don't think there's any more of an example of how week-to-week -week of a league the NFL is <laughs> because I didn't give the Jets a nickel of a chance of beating the Miami Dolphins. Not only did they beat them, they dominated the Miami Dolphins. I'm thinking, what in the heck happened between last week and this week? And now if you're the New York Jets, A, you have confidence, and B, you're playing a Jaguars team that you know will be affected, even though they won last week in London. Going back and forth with that travel to London and coming back, that's clearly going to affect them. They're undefeated in London, but they have a less than stellar record than when they come back. So I would tell everybody out there, don't be surprised if the Jets are at 500 after this game, because there's too many circumstances right now that seem to be in their favor where they can be 2-2 two and two and not 1-3. and three. And also, the defense got a lot of confidence last week. You know they want to carry that over into this week to help out their offense as well. Freddie, one back on the Giants real quick. Is Odell Beckham Jr. going to get the big contract he deserves based on his talent and, and oftentimes performance, or is he going to get shortchanged a little bit because of the antics? I believe he gets a big contract. It will not be for, from the New York Giants because as talented as he is, when you keep getting called out time and time again, but yet you have Eric Flowers who they're coddling like a little toddler. Mm. If you're Odell Beckham Jr., you have to look at them and say, so you're getting on me for this and I'm producing. That guy can't play dead and it's going to get our quarterback killed, but yet you find ways to speak up and protect him all the time. At a certain point, maybe if you're Odell Beckham Jr. You're thinking, I want to stay here, but I know I'm a talented enough dude that I can go somewhere else and somebody's going to recognize that a lot more. I wonder how much of that may be playing into the fact with Odell Beckham Jr. And, yes, let's be honest, he is a diva. There's no doubt about that. He is. He's going to make sure it's all about him when he's celebrating. We completely, completely understand that. But you cannot doubt his production. You can't doubt his competitiveness. You can't doubt his commitment. 
And if I'm Odell Beckham Jr., and yeah, you want to punish me for that celebration, okay, I get it. But yet that guy out there can't play at all, and you keep making excuses for him. Why would you want to stay with an organization that maybe does not give your credit, give enough credit to the talent that you have and produce to a guy that has not done that in Eric Flowers? The Buffalo Bills are two and one and still tied in first place in the AFC East with the New England Patriots. They get the Atlanta Falcons on Sunday. Is this our best test to find out what the Buffalo Bills will be as they take on the defending NFC champions? It's going to be a great test because I thought they passed a great test last week with not only the way they were able to make Trevor Simeon look like a rookie quarterback for the Broncos, but they were able to get running game against a Broncos team that didn't allow the Dallas Cowboys to do any of that with that offensive line. So that is something that if you're the Buffalo Bills, you can take into this game and say, hey, we know we can play with the big boys in the NFL. But that Falcons offense is really, really scary with their ability to be a two-fisted team where you think you can take away the running game and then Matt Matt Ryan is throwing the ball over the place of Julio Jones. You think you can try to take that away and let them run the football. They can do that with Devontae Freeman and Tevin Coleman. So that is something that Buffalo playing this kind of offense, if it's not the best offense in the National Football League, it's in that conversation. And their defense is just fast enough to take things away. I can't wait to see how the Buffalo Bills handle that because they passed a great test last week. But this Falcons team is definitely better than the Denver Broncos overall. ESPN's Freddie Coleman with us here on Big Board Sports 104.5, the team ESPN Radio. Chris Honorado and Gaz sitting in for Roger here. Freddie, you join us every Friday during the football season, but I have to take you to the world of the NBA because it appears... The final domino this offseason has finally fallen, and that is the move of Carmelo Anthony. Knicks fans can no longer blame Melo for what has been plaguing this franchise uh, during his time there. He's now in Oklahoma City. How, if at all, does his move to the Thunder change your view of the West? Well, I don't think it changes my view of the West because Golden State is still the best team, but boy, oh boy. A bunch of killers are out there now where you got Houston, what they did in the offseason. You have the moves with Oklahoma City. You can't forget about the San Antonio Spurs. Golden State pretty much knew that teams are going to stack teams to try to combat them. And I don't think that's a bad thing, to be honest with you, because if you want to, if you want to take down the king, make sure you have enough, enough armor and enough ammunition with you that you feel that you have a chance. But with, with, with Carmelo Anthony, people are saying, how is this going to work with him and Russell Westbrook? Carmelo's just going to be fine because now he doesn't have to carry an organization like he did with the New York Knicks. Let's call it as it is. When things were bad, he was the one guy out front that was answering questions from the media. He didn't run away. He didn't back down. Unlike Phil Jackson, who they got rid of, and James Dolan, who doesn't have any reason to talk to the media at all when it comes to basketball. By him being that spot-up shooter in that stretch four, all of a sudden Russell Westbrook had more lanes to go to the basket Paul George has more lanes to drive and kick or drive and penetrate, also make shots on the outside, and he can be that spot-up guy to stretch the floor. It's going to work out better than people want it to because they look at Carmelo Anthony, and rightfully so, that he's a ball hog and that he's selfish and that he can only shoot. But he's still one of the great scorers in this league. Now he doesn't have to worry about people criticizing him for that because that's exactly what Oklahoma City wants from him. Freddie, I'm so frustrated because I'm born and raised Syracuse. I'm a big Carmelo Anthony fan, and I see how it ends in New York. I wanted him to win so badly in New York. I wanted this to be his crowning achievement, that he did it. How should we feel about the legacy of Carmelo Anthony for the Knicks? I'm glad you brought that up because I'm a New York Knicks fan, and he did everything he could and then some because he wanted this. He wanted to have a chance to be in New York and have his own team. But Carmelo Anthony is the kind of guy that he does not raise the level of others, and I think that's going to be his legacy in New York. Anybody that's a championship-type player or a leadership-type player, you not only raise your level, you find a way to raise the level of other guys. And Carmelo Anthony was never able to do that as a Batman. He's more of a Robin, a Justice League member, than actually a guy leading the cause with being the guy in the front and being the guy that people can rally around. He's not that kind of guy. And that's okay because Scottie Pippen is in the Basketball Hall of Fame <laughs> for not being a Batman, but being a terrific Robin to Michael Jordan all those years. But when Carmelo Anthony had his mind set on that, he got what he wanted and he had to deal with it. And it didn't work out in New York. It wasn't that he didn't try to do it, but I think that's going to be his legacy. He did try, but he was not a Robin. He was a bat. He was not a Batman. He was a Robin, and that's something that he's going to have to carry with him, whether he wins a championship or does not win a championship in Oklahoma City. Freddie, always appreciate the time, man, and appreciate the fact that you get up early for us on a Friday morning. We will uh, we'll catch up next weekend. My pleasure, guys. You guys have a great weekend, and enjoy the football, too.